Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Augustana, where Lutherans and Anglicans worship together. I would like to acknowledge we gather on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of many people of the Métis Nation. You are welcome to worship with us. We aim to share the unconditional love of God with people of all abilities, ages, colors, ethnicities, sexual orientation, or gender identities. This is a work in progress, and you are welcome to join us in our on our way. Just a few announcements before we begin our time of worship. There, I'm just making sure that I've got my microphone on. <laughs> and uh, as has been the case in the last while, we are recording our service and it'll be available later in the day online and by phone. We won't be having an in-person service next Sunday. Um, I'm going to be in Calgary. My mother is in poor health. So next Sunday, we'll be, uh, there'll be information on a link to uh, worship for next Sunday. Uh, I would like to give you an update on the street fair, which the Broadway street fair, which Augustana had a booth at. It was a very, a very uh, spare kind of fair this year. Very few booths and far, quite far apart. Um, but we did have a booth and uh, made a profit of around about $510. And Gord Morley, who kind of headed up the organization of that, would like to thank all of the people who contributed crafts to the sale and also to the volunteers who uh, took turns with masks serving the people as they came by. We are in the season of creation which is an ecumenical international kind of thing uh, in the world these days where we reflect on the scriptures and also on creation during this time. And um, we, have, we, we will celebrate communion. And so how we do that is we start on the pulpit side and people come up, of course, keeping space in between households, come up and take the bread in front of the, the bread will be in front of the font and then the wine or grape juice and then we'll carry along around this way. And then on this side, around in this way. The Synod did send out some information about kind of how we are to carry on in this fourth wave of the, of the virus. And basically, what we are doing is what we should be doing. And uh, the only thing that was clarified for us, other than what we're already doing, is that um, we'll have to look for another way to do Sunday school this fall. They're recommending because um, kids under 12 can't be vaccinated that we not have Sunday school in person. So we'll have to put our thinking caps on and figure out how we're going to do that. So as we begin our time of worship, I invite you to stand as you're able for our opening hymn, number 660, Lift High the Cross. <laughs>
we begin our time of worship as we began our life of faith. In the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Kyrie is in the front of your hymn book, page 203. be seated. So in one of our readings today, the one from the letter from James, um, there's talk about small things that control the whole. And uh, one of those things is described as the bit in the mouth of a horse. Now, I, I'm looking at you, Mason, because you, you have a, a pony, right? Yeah, so if, if you can correct me if I start talking about things that I know nothing about, because that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. So, a horse, which is, okay, a pony about that high at the head, or, or where do you measure a horse? About like, like that? Uh, how, about like that? Okay. And then, then a, a, a big horse would be, well, their head's up here, but I'm, anyways, big, big, lot bigger than us. So, a big, strong animal, and we control them with that bit in their mouth, 
or at least that's kind of what I was thinking. But then I was rethinking that because a horse will only respond to that bit if it's trained to it. I mean, you can't just put that bit in any old horse's mouth, right? Okay, we'll say right. And so a horse has to be trained, like there has to be that relationship with the horse for that training to be possible. So it, the bit might be controlling the horse, but the bit can only control the horse if there has been that relationship with the horse so that the horse trusts the person who is holding the reins and, and controlling the bit in their mouth. So that kind of made me rethink things about how I understand this letter from James, because James is talking about not just the bit, but the, the tongue, that tiny little part, that tiny little strong muscle in our mouth that gets us into so much trouble. Um, it's just a tiny little bit of us, but that tongue can get us into lots of trouble. But that tongue can also speak up for justice. It can speak up for people who, are, who don't have a voice of their own. And I think that tongue, that little tongue, that little strong muscle in our mouth, well, it's kind of like the bit it doesn't work all by itself. It kind of depends on the, the love and care that has gone into that person who has the tongue. Um, all, all the relationships that that person has had. And particularly, what James is talking about in his letter is about the relationship with God, that whole, that whole package that kind of determines how this little muscle works for us. So how is it that this voice that we've been given, how is it that we use it? Do we use it in the world constructively or do we use it for harm? Let's pray. Merciful and mighty God, Teach us what it means to pick up our cross and follow you. Give us the wisdom to use our voice in the best way possible. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first reading is from Proverbs, chapter 1, 20 through 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. 
but those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking, in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame, can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does the spring pour, pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine, figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our gospel acclamation. The Gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, 
he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace. In this place and at this time, may grace only be preached and may grace only be heard. Amen. Um, I don't know if you've ever wondered why many preachers wear this gown, uh, an alb. And uh, there's lots of reasons. But one reason that I'm very thankful for is because it hides our shaky knees, as does the pulpit itself. (laughs) Uh, Myself, for many, many years, I never, ever slept Saturday night. I just didn't. I couldn't. I was just too nervous about the possibility of standing in front of people and saying something. I remember when I was on internship, my supervisor, who knew how nervous I was, uh, assured me that that, that's pretty common. He said he himself, for years and years, vomited before every service. Fortunately, he was serving in a church that had a little bathroom behind the altar. So, yeah, anyways, we're often very nervous about getting up here and saying something. And I guess you could say, well, we're nervous, we might mispronounce something and be thought a fool, but that actually doesn't really worry me too much. Um, With eyesight that varies from day to day, I make so many of those mistakes, it doesn't really bother me so much anymore. But what really worries me is that I might possibly lead someone in the wrong direction or that I might offend or hurt someone. In other words, I, I am often, well, pretty much every week, I, I'm a concerned that my words could do more harm than they could do help. And I mean, this is not just preachers. Uh, it, it's also any who teach. They, they carry a heavy responsibility. And James, in his letter, puts it this way. We who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Well, that to me points to why it is that this reading is put together with a reading that talks about wisdom. Anytime you open your mouth, it requires wisdom. And sometimes this wisdom is very counterintuitive. Sometimes it is the words that we do not want to hear or the words that make us uncomfortable that are the words that need to be spoken. But even Peter made the mistake of trying to avoid the hard topic when he said to Jesus, don't talk like that. People don't want to hear that kind of thing. In that case, the the message that Jesus shared was about his coming suffering, about the cross, about picking up the cross and carrying on. So as we pick up the cross in our own time, we look for wisdom um, in how to face those difficult topics, those difficult things that we would much rather look at 
And there are so many of them. Right now in this season of creation, we try to face as directly as we possibly can the suffering of creation, the suffering of our home here on earth, and the suffering that this current trajectory inflicts upon the earth's most vulnerable people. As we seek the wisdom to, to share the hard words about our home, this earth that we live on, as we try to find the way to use our words and actions in such a way that brings healing. Because how we speak and how we act matters. And it may seem like this is a message for preachers and teachers, but it, it is not. I don't want to mislead you into thinking that, that really that this message is only for those who are in positions of leadership or, or teaching in some way, because this is actually a message for all of us. This is a message for all who pick up their cross to follow Jesus. And I would say the basic message is that our voice matters. Your voice matters. So what do we do with this voice that we've been given? Let us pray. Creator God, grant us the wisdom to respect and care for each other as you would. Grant us the wisdom to respect and care for the earth as you would, so that all of creation is cherished. Amen. M798.
Let us now join our hearts and voices together in prayer. Each short prayer will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And you can make the prayer your own by responding, hear our prayer. Creator God, the freedom and responsibilities we were gifted by you have been abused. We have used domination rather than being stewards of your sacred creation. Walls are created to keep others out instead of inns where all are welcome. Help us to trust in our identity as your children. Accept our thanks for all people who show in action that indeed your creation is sacred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, hear us as we cry out to you for peace and justice for the peoples and the land itself. Guide us to a place where sacred water, land, and resources are respected and shared by all. As your word became part of your living creation, teach us to trust in hope that one day soon all may dwell in peace and happiness. We pray especially for the Iqbal and Al Hamad Wahid families. May your justice truly course through all lands like an unstoppable flood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are lonely, anxious, or afraid. We pray for all in need of your healing, especially Wilma, Jim, Kevin, Alan, Bernie, Alan, Edith, Earl, Audrey, Orville and Carol, Bruce, Gloria, Marcus, Brody, Karen, Anthony, Robert, Linda, Gail, Evelyn, Lisa, Danielle, Shelby, Deanna, Minnie, Karen, and all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Encircle them in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we live through a fourth wave of this pandemic, give us the energy and fortitude to carry on day by day. Help us to be patient, loving, and kind. Support all those whose work sustains the community and our health care system. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, we give thanks for Mother Earth and all her abundant life. She protects us and nourishes us. Help us to conserve nature and serve all creation. Continue to reveal yourself through your sacred creation. Help us to shape ourselves within the warmth of each day and every time we allow new wisdom to guide us and help us grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Creator, heal and redeem the wounds of your creation. We know the food which grows from your creation is meant for all. Help us find ways to bring nourishment to the people and places that seek it. Teach us and show us the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God of earth, sea, and sky, ignite the sacred fire of your spirit within us that we may rise up to heal and defend Mother Earth and pour your blessing upon all who work for the caring of all your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythms of the lakes speaks to us. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flower speak to us. But above all, our heart soars for you 
speak to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Um, at this time, we don't share the peace in the way that we have, but I invite you to find a safe way to share Christ's peace with each other, and also for those who are watching at home. Let us pray. God, our creator, through your love you have given us these gifts to share. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks and our concern for those in need, including our fellow creatures on planet Earth. Amen. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving, and you'll find that in the front part of your hymn book, page 206. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, loving Creator. Your word is the impulse for all things to be, for space, stars, and stardust to appear, for earth to emerge from the deep, for life to be born of earth and for humans to be born of earth and the spirit. You chose to be born a human being, to become a part of earth, to suffer, die, and rise from death to redeem humankind, renew creation, and affirm all born of earth and the spirit. Your presence is the living impulse in all things, the Christ deep among us filling earth, land, sea, and air filling every element and place, filling the grain and the grape we share with you this day. And so with angels and archangels, ancient voices in the forest, high voices from the sky, deep voices from the sea, and the whole company of creation, we proclaim your presence among us and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
We remember, therefore, Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, and we await Christ's coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this holy communion we may know the unity that we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Knowing how God loves us as a mother and father, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, for all is now ready, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. is the the blue for you. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, did you do your hands yet? Okay, sorry. And oh, I don't have my mask on yet. I'll get my mask up and meet you down there. Heard in me? No, I've touched them. I'll eat them afterwards. If you want, if
I invite you to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Christ, for the meal we have celebrated with you. And we pray that through your body and blood, we may be healed and become agents of healing for earth. Amen. Receive the blessing of God, the creator, who is above all and in all and through all, and the blessing of God, the risen Christ, who restores life to all of our planet, and the blessing of God, the Holy Spirit, who encircles and supports us now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn number 771. Walk with love and care on God's earth and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.